now president of a very, very tiny NGO called Windmill. Uh, it's based in, in Croatia. It was founded in 2010. And it was founded uh, a couple of months after I was arrested uh, for supposedly leaking uh, war veteran registry in Croatia. So we had an issue with numbers in, in Croatia and there is some surplus of war veterans and you know, if it's a database and if it's politics and if it's internet, then, you know, there is only one guy in the country to arrest. So I was the one who got that uh, title. <clears throat> so uh, the reason why we formed Windmill is because I wanted to have another layer between me and the government. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, suddenly, my activities have become so large that I was unable to finance them myself so I'm more or less doing something since 2004 but in 2010 you know my lawyer's bill was so high that I simply had to find some uh, money from outside of my own pocket so that's basically the story on windmill why windmill because I strongly believe that we have to run against windmills so you know I, it's not a rational thing to do it's not smart trust me you know, people who are from Croatia, <laughs> just if they browse Croatian websites today, they, they can learn that from uh, me. Uh, the other thing is, Windmill, we are not doing anything in, in a long term. So, we are not into advocacy, into lobbying. We don't care about the law too much. Uh, we simply uh, try to find something which is painful for the government or a particular group of people and then we hit them as hard as we can and then we run. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I think this is true, I'll show you. So, we don't have any infrastructure, we don't have any space, we don't have uh, anything except for a couple of uh, file servers which are located far, far away from Croatia and this legal European jurisdiction so and I'm not going to tell you how we actually do that but you know they are safe more or less so I'm quite satisfied with our security protocols so uh, the whole thing the thing started in 2004 I used to own one of the largest printing companies in Croatia at that time uh, and I was visited by a couple of very nice people from the tax office and they wanted a bribe in order to go away and I did a mistake of my life and throw them away and they basically destroyed my company I lost uh, I mean 60 people lost their jobs I lost everything I ever made in my life through the period of like 20 years and uh, I was basically broke and I decided to do something about it so I don't worry about myself too much but I said okay I'm going to try to do whatever I can to stop this from happening to anyone in the future, you know, whoever comes next. So, so that was my turning point and why I decided to work with politics. So my decision is, I, I usually explain it, uh, I, I try to do stuff like Israelis did in 72 after the Munich Olympics. So we kill everybody, you know. Everything, you know, the guy who did it, the guy, the guy who sold him milk one day, the teacher from school, everyone, no witnesses left. So, and the point is, in order to fix this issue which happened to me, you have to replace the government. So my goal in 2004 was to replace the government. So I started writing a blog, and blog was pretty uh, soon quite successful, and so on. Uh, but still, it was a website where only I was talking to some people and there was no discussion, you know, there, there was no, uh, uh, no added value uh, to that. So afterwards, I created a, a website called politica.com which is still alive today and it's the first group of blog which I created because one day I noticed that when I am listening to the guy from the right side of political spectrum, I simply don't understand what he's talking about. And then I got another idea, maybe when I'm talking, he doesn't understand what I'm talking about. So let's create a website where the left and right can come and discuss things. So the website is generally based on idea of daily costs from the US, quite popular website, although daily costs is dedicated to the 
democratic wing of uh, uh, politics, so the left left wing politics, and Politica is open to both left and right. So currently, the right is winning on Politica. So I'm not really happy about it, but. You know, there are only so much things you can do. <clears throat> so, I started working in politics and I decided to be a political consultant. So I actually work for politicians. During the day I work for them, in the evenings and on the weekends I do against them. So, I was doing a presentation in 2007 about internet campaigning in Copenhagen and I put this slide on and you can notice that uh, in Croatia we have like uh, 40,000 more voters than citizens and everybody was laughing, you know, Denmark is a very stable country and, you know, things that, like this don't happen in Denmark. And I told them at that point in time that Croatia is on its way to EU and by the time we join EU we are going to synchronize all our laws, including laws of mathematics and physics. <laughs> and it actually happened. And, you know, in order to replace the government, I really don't care which government we have in power. I would prefer to have left one, but, uh, you know, the, the point is we need to have a just government. And you cannot have a just government without just uh, election process, and you cannot have a just election process without a very clear situation who can vote and who cannot vote. And this is a huge issue. In Cro everybody from Croatia knows this very well. And there are plenty of reasons why this is happening and so on. And everybody knew about the problem, but nobody was actually doing anything to fix it. So, I was thinking about it and I said at one point in time, well, if I could get a copy of voters list for an entire country, I would be able to calculate how many people live on a particular address. Which means that I live in the very center of uh, Zagreb and I simply don't know anybody who is uh, uh, voting twice or stealing elections or whatever, but maybe s someone somewhere knows about his neighbor or about some other house or whatever where there are more voters than uh, people actually living in, in the building. And then we came to the point of city, uh, of it's not even a village, it's a uh, Dusine, it's a, like a sub village on border of uh, Croatia and uh, Herzegovina, Bosnia. And in uh, this very, very tiny village, which is not even visible on, on, on uh, satellite picture, there is a build-up. I mean, so they say there is a building where we have like 404 voters living in it. <laughs> and the building is obviously not there. I mean, we, we have tried to find it, but we couldn't. So, that was the voters list. It was a very simple website, you know, you just put a name of your street and your city or just the name of your village or, or uh, the part of Croatia where you live and it will list you the number of people living in on a particular address. It's easy, simple to use and we had the option, you know, report your neighbor, you know, which was <laughs> considered offensive. <laughs> so, that was really, really popular. And, and uh, this website was a basis for winning an uh, e-democracy award and half a day with the police uh, explaining myself. So, in 2010 we had another website, so in April of 2010 this website showed up. Uh, the problem is, uh, we know from the war records we had like 350,000 uh, soldiers after 1995. Today in our books we have like 550,000 of them and they draw about 1 billion euros of benefits per year in different uh, benefits. So we have like 200,000 people who sh shouldn't be there generally. And then you have a website like this where you can type a name of a person uh, or you can choose the unit and a particular date in time. And if you type a name you will see the war record for that particular person in which unit uh, he was a member from which day to which day or if you choose uh, the unit you will see on that particular day on in particular unit these people uh, were members uh, we i mean we journalists found sorry so you are admitting you did it no 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 i didn't admit to anything there is a 10 years <laughs> in prison for this one 
By the way, that was the most successful, successful Croatian website ever, including the future. Uh, it had like... <laughs> no, 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 really. It had like 14 million visits in 10 days. 14 million visits in 10 days. <clears throat> That's like, you know, every crowd on internet visited the website a couple of times during these 10 days. So, including the future, trust me, no matter how many crowds will be there in the future. <clears throat> so, that was the website. And of course, some people got really angry. For example, Tom Slavivic, uh, you know, the first one on the list. Uh, we ended up counting like almost 400 days, which nobody remembers him in, in the army. We found people uh, being a member of a unit six months before the unit was actually formed, or we found people who were actually war veterans like a year after the war ended. So everything happened on that one. So I was arrested, everything I had with an uh, on-off switch was confiscated, I was held for questioning for 10 days, and unfortunately for them, very fortunate for me, the police was unable to prove anything. So I was let go, but you know, <laughs> I have like 100% recognition rate with the Croatian police. So, uh, we did some other stuff, more peaceful stuff, uh, like Proračun. So, this is one of the very first tree map visualization of Croatian state budget. The idea behind it is that people don't really know how much money goes to particular uh, expense. So, I wanted to show them that, you know, if your whole screen is state budget, which portion of it will go to schools, to uh, healthcare, to army, to police, or to buy cars or whatever. So that, that website was pretty uh, popular. We did some other stuff, like this one was really popular. So this is basically a website uh, where you can create your own version of state budget. So on the left side you have income of the government, you know, taxes collected and everything. On the right side you have expenses, like healthcare, unemployment, uh, pension system, the other, the rest of the pension system, pensions to uh, uh, war veterans and, and so on. So you, you actually start with government's proposal of the government for the next year, but you have these levers which you can pull to the left or to the right and increase or decrease particular income or uh, expense. Of course, if you, for example, increase uh, income for uh, healthcare, so you put a larger tax on uh, income, then uh, immediately on the right side, you will uh, get more money into healthcare system. In the top left uh, field, if you type uh, the amount of money you are making per month, then we will calculate how much of your tax money goes to a particular expense. For example, uh, so uh, somewhere, so top right uh, position, uh, to the right, it, you have like, uh, if you have a 14,000 Croatian Kuna uh, uh, monthly salary, which is a fairly high salary in Croatia, then you uh, pay to education and sports, I believe that's like 6,000 Croatian kuna, almost 1,800 euros a year. Or you pay to the policeman like 250 euros a year or whatever. So the idea why it's important to calculate how much of your money goes to a particular expense is because when people are discussing uh, I don't know, we are going to build a bridge, and bridge will cost 150 million euros. And nobody really understands the amount of 150 million euros. It, that, that, for a normal person who is not into economics, into money, he cannot uh, distinguish uh, 50 million from 100 million to 150 million, because all these numbers are so abstract and so large to them, that they cannot make a relationship, is it uh, expensive or not. So, in this way, we have tried to calculate how much of your money <coughs> goes to a policeman, and you know that you are paying like 400 euros a, a year for uh, police, and when you 
uh, see a policeman or when he stops you uh, while you are driving, then you uh, can expect some kind of service to be delivered for this uh, 400 euros. So that, that was the idea. And the website was very successful. We made like uh, 140,000 people made their own version of state budget and you can tweet about it and share about it. And of course everything is saved so we could calculate the average state budget, you know, what the average creation, you know, with 140,000 uh, versions of state budget, we can calculate what is the average uh, state budget. And in this particular case, I have managed to cut the deficit a lot, and I have fired like 20,000 people, mostly from police, but at that point in time, I was, I was pretty emotional, so. <laughs> so. Me and police, we have like a long-standing long relationship. <laughs> so, the other thing is, after that we went to public procurement, because the other way the money is leaking from the government is public procurement, and this, this is a website uh, owned by the government, uh, where you actually publish all of your public procurement procedures. The problem with this particular website is that first of all you have to pay to access it, the data uh, on the website is available only for the past 60 days. Uh, the name of the supplier and the buyer are not on the same uh, web page, so you cannot actually search for, for two terms, you know, the, the name of my company and some ministry. So it, it simply doesn't happen. And of course, ev everything is uh, designed not to be searchable. Uh, it's not uh, indexed in any way, and uh, you know it's simply a mess. So there is no particular way to find it. Oh, and uh, uh, besides, there are like 14 different types of uh, information which you can get about the public procurement, like uh, pr procurement started, uh, procurement was finished, uh, procurement was contracted. Uh, procurement was changed, you know, there are a lot of different events <clears throat> and everything is published in a very Facebook-like way, you know, you have a wall and everything is happening now. So, they have like hundreds of pub, pub, uh, posts per day about different procurements and they're not searchable. So what we did, we found, uh, let's say, poorly guarded uh, server and uh, we downloaded like 150,000 uh, different contracts. We uh, put them in our database, classed the database, and meshed that information together with information from uh, financial results of the companies, which means that you can actually search, you, you can go to the website and, uh, and tell the website, show me all companies which make more than 50% of their turnover with the government. And then you get a list of uh, candidates. Or you can uh, ask, uh, show me all the companies which work a lot with the government and have unusually high profits. And you decide what is unusually high profits. Or show me all companies which make more than, uh, I don't know, which made more than 1 million euro with the government and have no employees, you know, st stuff like that. So, this site was also very popular. Uh, I was threatened by the government because of this. They actually, uh, the, the journalists uh, asked them, are they going to arrest me for this website? And uh, the government actually issued a press release saying, we are not going to arrest him this time. <laughs> Which is, to me, unbelievably funny, but uh, quite popular website. And we also did a small contest. We invested like uh, two and a half thousand euro and made a content, uh, contest. We uh, uh, we have made all these databases uh, freely available to everyone, so it's downloadable from day one. And we said, if you can make a better analysis of our data, or you can make an infographics, or you can draw any conclusions, uh, conclusion which we didn't make, you know, anything original, then we are going to give you some of this money. And in the end we actually got uh, a few uh, very interesting results and uh, just recently uh, the Vuk Vukovic from Zagreb Economic 
faculty, I believe, or one of the uh, faculties. He made a very uh, large work based on, on data we collected uh, with, with Vitrenja. What the government did, so in Windows 2012, they actually made a presentation saying we can do it better than Marco. And I told them, you know, if the whole government, all 350,000 of you, can make something better than me, you have already lost. <laughs> So the point of this story is, is very, very simple. Very, very few dedicated people with a good idea can make some kind of change. You might like it or don't like it. You might agree with uh, the methods or approach or whatever. But the fact is that change happened. So there is no uh, discussion about it, more or less. So. What I am working on now, so I have uh, worked a lot on uh, open data movement uh, throughout the world. I've been to uh, and worked a lot in the US, in Brazil, in, I don't know, uh, in Asia, I mean, on all, lots of places. And uh, I'm particularly frustrated because in Croatia we don't have uh, open data yet. The government promised, but no, nothing uh, really happened yet. They, something will happen soon, but uh, it's a question. But I'm not working on open data anymore, so I'm not really interested in op open data. If I want something, I go and find it. <coughs> I open it for them. So. Uh, the second thing I'm working on, <coughs> I started working on is you know the concept of big data. You know, that's very sexy now and there is a lot of money to be made with uh, big data. And uh, the big data is interesting because, first of all, big data doesn't have to be big. You know, it's a one uh, first, uh, uh, first thing you have to know about big data is it doesn't have to be big. It's just important that you have as many sources as possible. So you can feed, so like we did with uh, public procurement, so it's fairly easy to take all the information from public procurement process, but you actually create value when you mesh that information with something else. In our case, with public information, public financial information of the companies who were actually doing the job. And suddenly, you can see the picture which was not visible uh, when uh, you look at the procurement da data alone. And the very next thing, we are, I'm doing is it's called predictive analytics. So predictive analytics is so th this is Gartner. Gartner is a major consulting company in the world, and they have this thing called hype cycle. So whenever you start talking about particular technology, it falls into place somewhere on the hype cycle. You know what can you do? You know, is it more sexier than it can actually deliver, or it's very useful? So, uh, somewhere on the right side of the you know slope downward in the middle, we have open government data. So, in Croatia, we are not there yet. So, we are probably, I mean, we are falling down. That's for sure. But we haven't reached open government data yet. But predictive analytics is on the most right bubble uh, on the line, so plateau productivity, because plenty of things can be calculated with uh, predictive analytics. And it's a question of uh, predictive analytics is just, uh, you know, marketing speak for artificial intelligence. So uh, this is Alan Turing uh, statue uh, in, in uh, Britain. but. Artificial intelligence is not as smart, actually. <coughs> uh, you have to know what you are doing. Basically, uh, you are looking at artificial intelligence and predictive analytics uh, every single day. When you go to a website like Amazon.com or any any smarter blog, then you will see that you know it will tell you the people who read this article also read. You know, the people who bought these shoes also bought something else. So this is predictive analytics based on a huge sample of data. We can actually calculate what, what is most uh, 
uh, interesting for you. If you are visiting like uh, five or ten websites, if you visit a website selling uh, BMW cars, and then uh, you visit uh, men's health magazine website, and then you visit, uh, I don't know, site like Financial Times, we can uh, calculate that you are probably a male, that you are 40 or uh, older, and uh, that you have a lot of money to spend. And then we are going to offer you a BMW or Mercedes or something else. So this is basically what predictive analytics uh, does. <clears throat> but you can do predictive analytics in uh, Excel. So when they tell you it's very, very, you know, highly intelligent and you need, you know, uh, complicated computers and everything else, you have to know that, you know, you can recreate artificial intelligence in Excel. I know it's hard to believe, but you can actually program algorithms for AI into Excel. I have tried to do it and it actually uh, <coughs> uh, works. I mean, there are a number of books which can be read about it and I strongly believe that in, in, in the very near future these topics will be really important. But the real question is how can we actually use these new technologies, especially in, in civil society, civil society or even in a public space because it's very easy to understand uh, predictive analytics uh, if you are uh, I don't know you, you are having a store you know the calculation shows that people who buy diapers will buy beer and therefore beer and diapers are always close to each other in shops I don't know if you noticed <laughs> some, some people know some people are maybe too young to know but they, you will learn Trust me, it's important to have here beside. The question is how to use this uh, for, for uh, public good. So, I'll show you. This is uh, an anonymized mashup of an uh, analysis I did for uh, Croatian government. Unfortunately, it's not uh, public. Uh, and I have some problems because of it. But uh, the thing is that this particular spreadsheet-looking uh, page is trying to calculate if a particular person has a right to a particular social benefit based on uh, average income of a uh, member of the household. So, uh, somewhere uh, the column number two is the average in income of that uh, family. Uh, then you have I believe number of uh, family members and then you have a column which will say how much money was actually paid to that family during the year I believe this is like a nine months of 2013 or something and then you have like three columns and in each of these columns I have tried to calculate income data from different sources because when you go uh, and ask for social benefit you are supposed to bring some proof that you actually make so much money or members of your family make so much money but because of the procedures and you know incomplete ways on how the income is calculated or who is it, who can actually give you a certificate how much money you are making you know there are plenty of ways to avoid this thing so you have three different calculations from three different sources and in general you all the colors should be identical in all three columns and if there is a difference in color that means that one of the sources has a different information and potentially there is a, some fraudulent activity going on you know if someone is corrupt someone filed wrong documents or falsified documents or whatever so in this particular uh, case more or less the only one who is really in, 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 in problem is uh, the line where you have yellow uh, yellow figure, 2001-82, and th this is an issue. This is something which has to be looked at. But if you filter uh, the database, so this particular social benefit goes to like 300,000 people in Croatia, and uh, 
if you filter uh, benefits versus the uh, bureaucrat who actually awarded you this particular uh, benefit, then you come to my favorite uh, clerk number 55, and as you can see, there is some business going on here. So, sadly, this guy is not longer with us. He has some explaining to do. So, uh, the thing is that you can use all these uh, techniques and technologies to, uh, all, to, to identify fraud and corruption quite easily and release this money which goes to uh, wrong people for something else. And uh, I'm really happy that there are people in, in the government who have actually started using tools uh, like this. I'm, I'm so sorry I cannot say more detail and why this is so important or how much money we have saved or how many people are in trouble, but uh, it, it's good that it's happening. It's in the news. Uh, th this one is not yet in the news, but it will be in the news in the next couple of months. So, uh, it will happen. <clears throat> so, the other thing we have to uh, be very aware of if we are using this predictive technologies, we, we are not talking about what will happen in the future or what we are calculating the probability of something happening in the future, in the past or in the present. So we have to be very, very careful that uh, to check out if our calculation shows something and we come to a particular conclusion and simply because it follows our line of thinking, we say this is correct. It doesn't necessarily have to be. So it's very, uh, uh, very smart and of course we have to be aware that, you know, Predicting the next step of a process influences the process itself. You know, it's highly complex mathematics. I mean, I didn't go to a, a school where they taught us mathematics very much, but I have uh, spent like the last 18 months reading so many books about mathematics and statistics and so on, and actually enjoying it, which is a strange story by itself. That <laughs> I mean, wonderful things can, can be done. So, how can we use that in, in, in uh, our space? Well, uh, the easiest things are, you know, uh, include this kind of technology on our website. So, to identify people who are willing to volunteer, who are willing to join or become a member, you know, based on behavior of previous people who uh, used your website and eventually decided uh, to do something or we can do more complex things like uh, finding uh, uh, information, in this case uh, Jersey City, uh, find incidents or occurrences of the past events like uh, something. So I believe that this is a uh, danger of having a house fire in, in New Jersey and you add up geographical data and suddenly you can actually calculate the probability of having a fire somewhere and based on this information you can either try to influence uh, your uh, local representative where to put a fire truck or fire building uh, or you can calculate something else. In Zagreb, uh, I have, you know, just for the sake of playing with it, I have tried to uh, use information derived from uh, uh, Google Maps. So you know everyone who is using an Android <coughs> device uh, is basically sending the data to Google non-stop so you can track where you were and I can track where you were. And uh, when they show you the map with the uh, plot uh, streets uh, uh, in the city, they basically calculate how many phones are there and how fast they are moving. So if there are plenty of phones and they are not moving or moving very slowly, there is a traffic jam. You know, it's a very simple conclusion. So basically, in the street where I have my office, <coughs> uh, we had a petition to the city that we want uh, to have a bus line going through our street because there are no, uh, 
the buses are not passing anywhere near uh, the streets where is my office and we actually use this information to calculate how many people are working in, in neighboring area and if there is an economic sense for uh, creation public uh, Zagreb public transport uh, company to actually introduce a bus line or change a route of any of bus lines to go through our city so it was uh, useful and uh, the best beauty of uh, AI and predictive analytics is that uh, you know the most tools are uh, either free or there are free versions of it so if you are into it you can start uh, doing your first artificial intelligence quite quickly you know the, the one thing I'm uh, currently doing I'm developing uh, AI engine which will uh, measure sentiment on Facebook and Twitter feeds and so on so if you have a fan, fan page of you or uh, I mean any page you can actually scrape down the, all the comments which are happening and calculate are they positive or negative and then you put that in correlation with the subject of the article and then you calculate if that theme is uh, favorable to people or not so there are plenty of plenty of ways uh, uh, to use it and it's basically on your imagination which is uh, limiting me or you or uh, whoever but again you have to know what you are doing so or at least you have to believe that you know what you are doing